Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Trains Rising Sun is a standalone expansion for Trains. And Trains was kind of a hot game when it came out because... It took the deck building world of Dominion and put a board with it. Simply, that's what it's done. Now, since it's a release, I think it's been done deader, better in different games. There's Dungeon Dragons game that has area control. There is Clank and Clank in Space. Now, those are different games. I get it. This is a root building game that uses deck building. And I think that is unique. But there's a few things and negatives for this game that really doesn't strike it for me. One, I'm kind of tired of train games. Age of Steam is kind of what I need. There's some other aspects of other games that I enjoy, but I don't really need another themed train game. In addition, while the cards and artwork are very beautiful in this game, they're just pictures of trains, and that's not something that gets me very excited. And I feel like I can get my train Jones somewhere else, and I don't feel like the deck building kind of works that well with it. I know I'm probably in the minority for that, but I wasn't playing like Age of Steam or these other train games and going, man, this really needs deck building. But it is an interesting marriage that I think that kind of works together in that Dominion style. Now, I also never really liked Dominion. Dominion was not the deck building game that got me into deck building at all. Played it quite a few times. It was okay. It was a race of no win to score the points. It wasn't something I overly enjoyed. So when you put Dominion with a board, you know, it's not going to strike my fancy as it will somebody who's coming from Dominion or really likes Dominion and wants maybe something a little bit more with that. And that's really the market for this. So the train thing didn't go well for me. The artwork wasn't something that appealed to me. And I'm not really a fan of the Dominion thing they're building in. But tra Trains Rising Sun is probably where I would start if you're going to enter the series because it gives you the, bo the root bonuses. And there's a couple extra things in this game that I think works a lot better than the base game of Trains. Now, they can mix and match as an expansion or you can play this by itself. Today we're looking at just Trains Rising Sun. So all the things I had a problem with the trains kind of comes over the rising sun. It just didn't do anything more that wowed me or made me want to keep coming back to it. The theme, eh, wasn't appealing whatsoever to me. So it was kind of a negative on top of that. And I think the root building is good. I think there are interesting decisions being made. You know, in the deck building aspect of kind of, you know, randomize a little bit more. There's decisions you're going through. You're getting the right combination of cards. And that's an interesting aspect. So while I will be purging this game, and it isn't very exciting to me, as I would choose to get my deck building elsewhere, yeah, if you like trains or you like what's going on here, this is a very, very good game that a lot of people enjoy, and I'm definitely in the minority on this one. Purge for me. Here's Trains Rising Sun. You can tell it's a pretty thick box here. It has a really striking train on the front of it. So this is a deep box. Maybe like Ticket to Ride. Uh, perfectly square. You're going to have a rule book inside, which we'll take a look at in a few minutes. And then you're going to have a board. And this board is going to be particularly un uh, interesting because it's going to have the two-sided on this half of the board. So you can just kind of set it like this. Or you can flip it over and do the other side. So there's two two-player boards uh, on that side. And then you have the multiplayer on this side. And pretty much the same as you're used to if you're used to trains. Scoring truck around, you got the cities, uh, the victory points, and the little things. Tells you how many buildings can go there, stations rather, and the topography that you're going to have here. But nice, solid board. Everything in here is constructed really nice. And we're going to get into this. We're going to have uh, boring cubes and little white cylinders. They didn't put any effort. Good quality? Absolutely. Gonna wow you at the table? Nope. You're gonna have these that you put out, which I appreciate these, because these will tell you where the roots are going to, but I mean, just cheapo stuff. And you got the artwork in here. I mean, it's almost like photorealistic. I mean, it's very easy to see the cost at the top and the powers at the bottom. You can tell here that uh, the artwork is just like photorealistic, although it's drawn. But I mean, it's just pictures of trains and stuff. Like here's a normal train. I don't know that's going to wow you too much. Or you know, if somebody comes there and be like, wow, what game is that? You know, it's got the strategy meeting on it. The surveyor is standing there. Eh, you know, it didn't do a whole lot for me theme-wise. But that's the components. I mean, the cards are good quality. You don't really need to shuffle them unless you're a fanatic about it. Um, but, you know, does this excite you? I don't know. I don't know what this is for here. This little insert thing, what you would put in there, it could easily get out. My hand can't fit down to the bottom. Um, so I don't know what. That's just wasted space to me. The game does come with dividers, which which is nice. So you can have all the little different dividers, you know. Um, 
So that's nice. Plus, something I wish Legendary would have had in their boxes but didn't. Uh, but there you go. Here's a rule book for Trains Rising Sun. It's about the size of the box, so it's very big. It's going to take up a lot of table space. So you're going to have to put it like, down on the floor while you're playing because it's not going to fit in here. It contents, there's no pictures, but it does have a breakdown of the cards and some of the new stuff that you're going to have in here. Uh, setup is right here. Here's an example. Set up with a picture, which is nice, and then the how to play. I mean, this is a really big book, and it goes through the turn. The turns really aren't that complicated. If you play trains before, this is going to be very easy for you. It's not a whole lot different, per se. Uh, completing routes, kind of how that works. Tells you about the two-player maps. And you have these new attack and reaction cards that will be in this one. Everything you've seen in this game, you have seen before. And a little terminology about how to lay the tracks and then to win. And then on the back of this... You're going to have a reference sheet. Everything is really good. In the rule book, it's fantastic. You're not going to have any problems. Maybe, you know, 20 minutes to read through this. If you play trains before, you're not going to need that much time at all. Maybe just a five-minute recap to kind of go through some of the new stuff. There isn't a section that says, hey, this is all the new stuff. Uh, that wasn't in the core game. That would have been nice. But the book, very colorful. You can see plenty of examples, plenty of pictures. Great job. through a very general outlook of this game. So what you're going to do is you're going to have a number of cards. There's going to be certain cards like Waste that will be in every game, and you're going to have these out. So what these cards are going to do is they're going to have a buying power that they're going to have. So if you have this card in your hand, this is how much money you get to buy cards. And this over here on this side is how much it costs to buy a card. For example, Waste, you can never buy. It's a negative card. If you wanted to buy the station expansion, it's three, but it gives you zero buying when you actually play it. So that's kind of how the cards will work. Uh, some of these cards like station expansion will have positives, like it gives you station and a recycle. This allows you to lay a track and recycle. This card cannot be bought. We talked about this. This one has an attack. Each other player discards the top card from his deck. Gain a victory point if any recycle is discarded. And then there's reaction cards that can block attacks. That's pretty much how this is going to work. Each time you play, you're going to have a different set of cards. And then what's going to happen is you're going to have these starter cards. Obviously, you're not going to have this many. This gives you an example of them. You're going to uh, draw, uh, have a number of cards. Each turn, you're going to draw five cards into your hand. And you can use these cards to purchase other cards. So in this case, one, two, three, four, five. I would have five buying power. And these don't have any actions on it because they're just beginner cards. So then I could go over here and I can start buying cards. Let's say these are the ones I could put. Well, the waste I can't purchase at all. So I could buy, I only got five. So four, three, three. There's no twos for me to buy in this example that I'm giving you. So, you know, I could, which one of these do I want to buy? This will go into my discard pile with the cards I just purchased. And then I would draw one, two, three, four, five cards from my deck. And this is what I would play on my next turn. When all of my cards are used, then I would shuffle these back up. Wait, remember, that's got the new card in that I purchased. And I would draw one, two, three, four, five, and that would be my new hand. I didn't get my new card. Play that next time. But on a preceding turn, maybe I get my new card, and now it's available to play. So that's kind of the basics of deck building. I'm sure if you're watching this, you're already familiar with that. But that's kind of how deck building is going to work in general. And I should point out that if you're used to deck building, this uses the Dominion style of having a set number of cards that are able to purchase on anybody's turn. And once those decks are gone, no more can be purchased. If enough decks of those, four or more of those decks are gone, then the game can lead to the ending. And whoever has the most victory points will be the winner of the game. Now, where Trains is going to differ from other games, there are going to be these cards that allow you to influence the board here. And as the game goes on, you'll be able to put cubes for your color out on the board and that will represent your trains. And there's an extra cost if you go over water, there's an extra cost if you go over forests, etc. And what you'll be trying to do is put these stations out, which you will have here, onto these locations in order to clear routes and score victory points. And each of these, like this one can have three on it, this one can only have one. So I couldn't put a second one on this one because it can only hold one, but this one can hold two. And that's kind of how that is going to work. Now, what's going to be a little bit different, in this one you're going to have route bonuses. So what's going to happen is you're going to want to complete routes in a certain pattern. So you're going to want to go from Kawasaki to Hishimoto, and if you do, you get the victory points that are assigned to these. These will be face up on the board for everybody to complete. Now, when you're building these things, when you're building these routes, every time you build something, you're going to have to take one of those waste cards into your hand. Now, the waste cards are going to be a negative and kind of clog up your deck. So you're going to want to get rid of these. And I've showed you before, you can get rid of these usually by card play or other factors in the game. And you'll be able to discard this out of your hand and it'll no longer clog it up. After the game ends, whoever has the most victory points will be the winner of the game. That's a general overview or oversight of how this game works. 
should buy this game. If you like trains, and you, this is a good expansion for it, really. If you're enjoying trains and you want a little bit more, Rising Sun is a great place to go to. I like the root uh, bonuses that it has and the extra stuff, and it gives you more variety. So that's kind of a no-brainer for me. If you are playing like Dominion, you're just new to deck building, and you want to add something new, I think this is a fine place to go. I'd probably push you towards Clank, but if that isn't appealing to you, that pressure luck, then this isn't a bad place to go at all. It has the root building. If you like train games and deck building, this is a great marriage. The game is very solid. A lot of people like it. I'm definitely in the minority, although I don't see a lot of people playing it anymore or talking about it. I think it took too long for this expansion to come out. People kind of like the base game, and it took forever for this to come out. I think that might have been a mistake and why you don't hear about it as much. The train thing is kind of boring, too. I, I get that a lot of people like trains game, and for some reason in board gaming world, they're very popular, but it's kind of boring. So... Going to be a perch for me. It wasn't something I was pulling off the shelf, so you got to go.